Good evening, all of you. Let us begin with the today's uh, daily news analysis. That is uh, 20th of March, uh, 2023. So uh, looking into the important articles. So already we have uh, uh, talked in depth about uh, Indo-China border relations. So I'm not going to go into its details. Today, we are going to mainly focus on a very important uh, article that is highlighted over here. It's moving forward with the newer concept of UHC, okay? So we are going to understand it that in depth. We are going to even understand what are the different schemes in the health uh, healthcare sector, which are there in our country, okay, implemented in our nation. So let us understand about uh, this topic. First of all, uh, what is the context of this article and what is being highlighted over here? So this article, it basically focuses on universal health care. Okay, so first of all, we are going to understand what do you mean by universal health care? So basically, the basic concept of the universal health care is that no one should be deprived of a quality health care due to lack of financial assistance, okay? So financial assistance should not be a reason for someone's ill health, okay? So person should always be in a position that he has access to the quality healthcare. So that is called as universal healthcare. And irrespective of your financial position, you should be in a state where you should have access to a good, affordable, accessible healthcare, okay? So if you want to understand the definition, so universal healthcare, it means that it means that all people have access to health services. So when I say health services, in short, it means that preventive health service okay so prevention promotion that is uh, uh, keeping your health in a good state so preventive promotive health care services treatment health uh, if you are suffering from any disease so you should have a good treatment at place rehabilitation after any accident and all after any big illness if you want to recover from it so rehabilitation care should be there and the old age care which is also called as palliative care okay so you should have access to all these health services, preventive promotion, then you have a, a tr access to good treatment, rehabilitation, palliative health care without the risk of financial hardships. Financial hardships, okay? So as I mentioned in the very beginning, that the statement that he... Your financial condition should not be a reason that you are not able to access a quality health care. Okay? So the basic intention over here is that irrespective of your financial condition, you should be in a position to access universal health care. Okay? That is, you should be in a position to access all these services with respect to your health care. We'll wait. I guess more participants are joining. Just a second. I'll admit them. Fine. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we are discussing the article, which is with respect to the universal health care. So uh, we have understood the meaning of universal health care. So universal health care, it means that all the people should have access to a quality health care services like preventive health care, promotion of health care, treatment, rehabilitation, old age care, that is palliative care. Uh, care without the risk of financial hardships okay so despite of your irrespective of your financial condition you should be in a position to get access to a quality health care okay so this is uh, the concept of the universal health care now when we talk about uh, india okay um, as per the indian constitution right to health care it's a fundamental right under right to life okay so we should always remember that ki universe, uh, right to health it's a fundamental right it's an fr under right to life okay under right to life that is under article number 21 it's a fundamental right okay now coming to the definition of who so according to the uh, world health organization what is the definition of health okay so when i talk about health who tries to give us a wider dimension with respect to health okay so it says that so I'll, I'll just zoom it so that you would be in a position to view the definition of the who Yes. So WHO, uh, it talks about health as, just a second. Yeah. 
so certain totality of health to the realms of mental and social well being okay so health is not just uh, your uh, you are physically fit or uh, no diseases there but it's a very broad definition which is being given by who it talks about it's a state of mind where mentally also you are well okay so mental and social well being and happiness beyond your physical fitness and an absence of disease and disability so definitely the basic definition of health is what absence of any disease or disability but who says that ki we need to go beyond this notion of absence of disease and disability as health we need to even encompass the broader aspects of healthcare and that is mental and social well being and happiness beyond the physical fitness okay and if we want to achieve this in the true sense, it is extremely important that there is a convergence between the different government agencies and departments okay because if you really want to achieve this a broader dimension of the healthcare we need that all the different government agencies should come together and uh, uh, provide this effective healthcare system in our nation okay so when we talk about uh, all the agencies coming together so there is a need that the health ministry then women and child development ministry agriculture department food and nutrition department okay animal husbandry everyone should be coming together and should be providing uh, necessary inputs when it comes to and um, the wider dimensions of the healthcare okay so now uh, the article talks about alma ata declaration and this was a preliminary question also so we are going to discuss this uh, uh, alma ata declaration so it's a very important declaration with respect to primary healthcare so i'll just highlight this yeah now when we talk about uh, primary so there are different levels of healthcare okay so first is the primary healthcare then you have secondary healthcare and then you have a tertiary healthcare so first let us try to understand what is primary healthcare so primary healthcare is the basic healthcare facility that is being provided at the primary healthcare center so in the rural areas usually you have primary healthcare centers and in the district areas you have health and wellness uh, sorry in the urban areas you have uh, health and wellness centers urban areas health and wellness centers now these are the simple level, uh, simple centers which provide you with the basic remedy at the basic grassroot level okay so basically providing vaccination immunization okay uh, uh, giving the inputs of the government schemes okay helping you with the cough and cold the basic diseases are being treated i at the primary healthcare centers so the primary scores of intervention whenever we are in is the primary healthcare center it could be in the rural areas these are designated as primary healthcare centers and in the urban areas they are designated as health and wellness centers okay after this the second level is the secondary healthcare level so first is primary healthcare level next is secondary healthcare now first of all you approach the primary healthcare if some big disease is being diagnosed okay so for example you are continuously ill with a particular condition and you are not able to get it cured at the primary level then you will be approaching towards the secondary level so secondary level is the secondary healthcare system which is there where you have big big hospitals and usually this covers the district hospitals okay so the first one is basically when i talk about primary healthcare centers or when we talk about urban health and wellness centers these are the basic small clinics which are there so they provide you the first hand remedy with your illness but something big is there something big disease is there then it needs to be treated at a broader level and for that you need to go to the secondary healthcare level okay so that is you will be approaching towards the district hospitals and beyond the secondary healthcare level you have the multi specialist institutions hospitals where you have intensive care units where you have proper diagnostic setup that is called as tertiary healthcare so these are the different levels of healthcare okay so whenever uh, you approach towards the healthcare these are the different levels okay first is the primary healthcare level after the primary healthcare you have to move towards the secondary healthcare okay so where you need to get uh, treated with the big diseases which cannot be uh, treated at the lowest level okay that is the primary healthcare level and finally you have multi specialist agencies institutions hospitals with all the modern facilities that is called as the tertiary 
health care system okay so health care system is built on this model primary secondary and tertiary okay now we are going to talk about alma ata declaration alma ata declaration it's a declaration on primary health care okay so alma ata declaration it says that the grassroots level of any health system should be the primary health care system so our utmost focus should be on first building the primary health care system okay so we are going to understand the important principles of this uh, alma ata declaration in one of the preliminary examination in one of the years they had asked the question ki alma ata declaration is with respect to which Field, whether it's related to primary health or it is related to education or it is related to the labor legislation so remember that alma ata declaration it's with respect to the primary health care okay so we are going to understand the different components of this uh, alma ata declaration i'll be sharing an image yeah so there are eight components eight components of this primary health care system so the eight components it talks about is first of all education concerning prevailing health problems okay so first of all we need to educate people with respect to the health problems and we need to introduce a proper methods for preventing and controlling them so that is the first thing second thing the basic thing of or the basic aspect of remaining healthy is to eat healthy so promotion of food supply and proper nutrition so that is the second component of primary health care the third thing is that water is the essence of everything okay so adequate supply of safe and clean drinking water and basic sanitation so if you want to remain healthy if you want to remain fit the basic aspects so these are the basic things which you need to incorporate into your daily living in order to remain healthy okay so the third thing is that basic sanitation and adequate supply of safe water fourth thing is that maternal and child health care okay so this is extremely important at the very initial phase only from the birth of the child it is very important that we take care that the child remains healthy so maternal and child health care including family planning fifth thing immunization so we know that we certain diseases are preventable and vaccines are available so immunization could be a best thing against certain infectious diseases okay so immunization so focus should be on immunization then prevention and control of locally and in uh, endemic diseases so certain diseases are endemic they they are restricted to that particular area only identify those diseases and try to prevent and control them then the next is appropriate treatment of common diseases and injuries so there are certain common diseases like for example tb is there you know the appropriate treatment dots treatment is there okay so if you know this is the common disease and this is the appropriate treatment started from the beginning itself and the most important thing is that provision of the essential drugs and that has to be provided at an affordable price to the citizens okay so these are the components of the alma ata declaration a very important one this alma ata declaration it was introduced in the year 1978 1978 and this was accepted by world health assembly so world health assembly it's an assembly of who world health assembly well where all the member countries are a part of this world health assembly and they accepted this alma ata declaration in the year 1978 and this declaration states that primary health care should be the basic essence of any country's health care system okay so these are the eight essential principles of the primary health care system so we have understood all these eight uh, um, things education is the first one then good food supply and nutrition then water and basic sanitation maternal and child health care immunization against all the major diseases prevention of the locally endemic diseases appropriate uh, treatment of common diseases and injuries and finally provision of essential drugs okay now we are going to understand what are the steps taken in india by the government in order to promote health okay in in the health in the health center in the health sector whatever steps that indian government has taken up till now we are going to discuss it in depth okay so i'll just open the ppt now first of all we are going to understand uh, the components of the health ministry i'll just this now the nodal agency when i talk about uh, health so the nodal agency is the union ministry so first of all we will be understanding its uh, department so we know that the name of the ministry is is the ministry of health and family welfare so there are two important departments under this ministry 
So health ministry, the entire name of this ministry is Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Okay. So there are two departments under this ministry. The first department is Department of Health and Family Welfare. And the second department is Department of Health Research. Now, this ministry has certain offices. Some are attached offices, some are statutory. Let us first have understanding of the attached offices. Now, whenever you talk about attached offices, attached offices means that those offices, they are under this health ministry only, but they are given a greater degree of operation. They are given a greater freedom with respect to operation, okay? So, or else you can say that these are like, they are functioning like an autonomous agency under health ministry, okay? So, the health ministry would not be directly controlling them. They will be given a freedom of operation, okay? So, under the attached office, the first one is Directorate General of Health Services. So, it's a very high profile body, Directorate General of Health Services. Uh, an officer is appointed as a directorate of this uh, body. Under this body, you have Central Bureau of health intelligence okay so central bureau of health intelligence it's a very important body and it releases an annual report national health profile of india okay so national health profile of india <clears throat> it's an annual report released by central bureau of health intelligence and this is a body under directorate general of health services Further under this Directorate General of Health Services, we even have an important organization, National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization. It's at Sub, uh, Subdarjan, it's in Delhi. This organization is always in news with respect to the issues of uh, uh, organ transplantation. So you can remember this NOTTO, it's a uh, high profile body with respect to monitoring the organ transplantation and this is an attached office under directorate general of health services okay so these are the two bodies under this uh, directorate general of health services then you have central drug standard control organization central drug standard control organization under this we have drug controller general of india and this entire office is responsible for the approval of drugs okay so clinic clinical trials are being conducted of these drugs and their approval is being done by this body so remember this central drug standard control organization it's an attached office under the health ministry the next is national health authority this is again an an attached office an autonomous body under the health ministry and its basic function is to implement pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana now, okay so pm j that is being implemented by national health authority so these are the important attached offices under the health ministry first directorate general of health service second one central drug standard control organization and the third one national health authority okay now coming to the statutory bodies statutory bodies are very simple we have indian red cross uh, indian red cross society as a statutory body then you have aims national all india institute of medical sciences apart from that in order to regulate the syllabus of the different uh, health uh, uh, professionals in india courses in india we have different organizations like for example to regulate the syllabus of pharmacy course we have pharmacy council then to regulate uh, the studies of dentists we have dentist council okay and uh, now the new body is there in place of medical council of india we all know that you on the medical Co uh, council of india numerous allegations were there of bribery and corruption so now a new act was introduced in 2019 national medical commission so now we have national medical commission that tries to control the fees in the private medical colleges it um, uh, regulates the system of uh, entrance examination for medical and uh, also the exit examination so after you complete your medical degree you need to give an exit examination to ensure the quality of the doctors in the nation okay then uh, there is also a proposed national nursing and midwifery commission bill is there so it tries to replace indian national uh, sorry indian nursing council already there is an indian nursing council a bill has been proposed to replace it and introduce a new body national nursing and midwifery commission okay there is also an important award with respect to nursing that is florence nightangle award florence nightangle she was a lady who laid the foundation of the modern nursing so in her honor this award is being given okay then now we have one more 
a body that is proposed there this is in the bill stage only national commission for allied healthcare professionals allied in the sense we have physiotherapists we have nutritionists we have uh, optometrists okay so for them also they are trying to make a body so these all are statutory bodies made under a certain act and mainly all these statutory, statutory bodies are with respect to controlling that respective health professionals okay so that is there then you have certain other autonomous bodies autonomous bodies like you have national population stabilization fund is there all india institute of speech and hearing it's in mysore okay then you have indian international institute for population sciences it's in bombay indian pharmacopoeia commission is there indian council of medical research it's a completely autonomous body under the health ministry this was built uh, this was established in the british era that was in 1911 and uh, today uh, it functions as a premier organization of india with respect to the health research okay and indian budget is uh, uh, of uh, 2022 in the budget 2022 it was mentioned that the india will be launching national tele mental health program okay so this is not yet implemented it will be like subsequently whenever it will be implemented will be understanding it okay so this is the structure of the health ministry you should focus on the attached officers statutory and the statutory bodies okay now coming to what are the different schemes that are there in the country with respect to mother and child care okay so first of all let us try to understand sustainable development goal number three okay so there is a sustainable development goal number three which requires that india needs to reduce its maternal mortality rate which is currently 130 so uh, during the time of introduction of this sdgs it was 130 our target is, is to reduce it to 70 by 2030 so under the sustainable development goal number three india's target is to reduce maternal mortality rate maternal mortality rate it is counted per 1 lakh live births okay so uh, uh, we know that ki during the pregnancy itself many women due to complications they lose their life okay so we need to regulate it and we need to reduce it to 70 by 2030 next is child mortality rate child mortality it's calculated per 1000 live birth and this is under 5 okay so uh, to uh, to reduce the death of children who are under the age of 5 and our target is to reduce it to, to 11 okay so it should be 11 per thousand live birth by 2030 these are our targets and a sustainable development goal number three right now coming to the programs so very first program that was introduced into the country uh, with respect to mother and child care it was integrated child development service icds icds itself holistic program it's an umbrella program with respect to mother and child care introduced under ministry of women and child development still this program is running why we are studying it still it's an operation okay it's a centrally sponsored scheme but it's a core scheme so funding is 60 to uh, 60 is to 40 with respect to the other states and 90 is to 10 with respect to himalayan states and northeast and union territories 100 percent funded by the union government okay now who are targeted under this so zero to six years children okay so children from the age group of zero to six and pregnant women and lactating mothers so these are the beneficiaries zero to six years children and pregnant women and lactating mothers uh, scheme is under ministry of women and child development it's a centrally sponsored scheme so as i mentioned that it's an umbrella scheme which includes number of sub schemes okay so anganwadi services so anganwadi you know that uh, pre primary level services are there in the rural area for the children to go there and learn the basic uh, uh learning abilities that are being provided over here fine then you have pradhan mandri matru vandana yojana so we are going to understand this in depth sabla scheme sabla is for the adolescent girls okay so in a certain age uh, in the in the age of adolescent we need to give special attention to the girls so that is that scheme portion abhyan with respect to uh food being provided in one time cooked meal to be provided to the students in the government schools national crutch scheme to set up crutches that is a uh, you need to set up crutches facility in the workspace itself for the working women so all these are the schemes under this entire scheme okay so this is one entire program 
integrated child development service and under this there are many sub schemes and this is still in operation okay the second thing which we are going to understand is national rural health mission okay so let us try to understand Midday meal scheme was the earlier one. Midday meal scheme has been reva revamped now as the portion scheme. Like in one of the uh, lectures we had studied, earlier it was called as a midday meal scheme in the 1985. It has been now introduced as the portion scheme. Fine? Yeah. Coming uh, towards the National Rural Health Mission. Okay. So National Rural Health Mission, a very important mission. Uh, introduced under the health ministry and there are number of schemes under this national rural health mission okay so first of all uh asha workers now who are these asha workers so you can uh remember the form uh the full form of the asha accredited social health activist okay so these asha workers they usually work in the rural areas in the urban areas also they work they provide uh awareness to the ladies with respect to pregnancy maternal care reproductive care uh, care has to, uh, how to uh, take care of the newborn baby okay so child and health uh, adolescent services all these things are being provided by the asha workers okay so national rural health mission focuses on the role of the asha workers the next is janani suraksha yojana now janani suraksha yojana it says that uh, this scheme is specifically for the bpl women below poverty level women irrespective of the age irrespective of the number of children a conditional cash transfer is given of 1000 rupees for a woman who is delivering a baby into a government hospital basically we know that in the rural area the deliveries happen in the home itself okay and when the uh, the issue is complicated and all then they run to the hospital so in order to encourage institutional deliveries a cash is given to the ladies those who go to the government hospitals and deliver a baby there so basically the intention over here is to in incentivize female in order to promote uh this uh institutional deliveries okay and also asha worker they are given a commission if asha worker encourages women to register their names into the government hospital and get delivery done into the government hospital so very important scheme janani suraksha yojana okay so that is the first thing then you have janani shishu Suraksha Yojana, okay. So what is Janani Shishu? Shishu means you are going to take the care of the child also. So you know that ki, uh, during pregnancy, a lot of complications can happen. So sometimes uh, the delivery can be a C-section one, caesarean one delivery. So this particular scheme, it tells that ki all even the normal delivery, even the C-section will be done at the government hospital free of cost, okay. Second thing, not only the deliveries will be done at at, uh, at free of cost because C-section, it actually, if you go to good hospitals and all the amount for the C-section is around 50,000 to, it goes up to 1 lakh, okay? So, and it is um, uh, not affordable for the common ladies from the rural area. So, in the government hospital, this facility is given free of cost. Apart from that, free food, free medicine and free transportation service from home to hospital by dialing 102 okay so by dialing 102 ambulance will be made available and free transportation service will be made available so this is also an important thing then you have a uh, suman yojana suman uh, suman it's basically an initiative under this national rural health mission only surakshit matritva ashwasan so basically if a pregnant woman visits a government hospital and if any treatment is denied to her she can register her complaint and immediate action will be taken against the responsible authorities okay so basically this scheme says that zero tolerance we are going to show zero tolerance if you guys are not giving the uh, dignity due dignity to the pregnant ladies okay so these are the important schemes asha is there janani suraksha remember thousand uh, as a cash transfer for institutional deliveries janani shishu shuraksha yojana what is uh, over here karikram basically uh, you are providing free uh, deliveries whether it's a normal or c section apart from that free transportation food and medicine so many yojana that is zero tolerance with respect to the uh, pregnant women okay then the next is pradhan mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan. Now, what is this? Introduced in the year 2016. These all schemes are under this only, National Rural Health Mission. Okay. Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan 2019. So, all pregnant women, they will be given a free medical checkup, iron folic acid tablets. Okay. Every night, 
on 9th of every month. So date decided is 9th. 9th of every month, uh, the ladies, pregnant ladies will be given all this facility. So basically, it's an antenatal period. So before the delivery, um, 9th of every month, you will be given all the this facilities okay even private doctors are encouraged that even you can join this uh, campaign on a volunteer basis that is you won't be given any fees and all but just as a social work you can come and you can associate yourself with the government hospitals okay so pradhan mantri surakshit matritva abhiyan remember 9th of every month free checkup for all pregnant ladies laksha laksha is what basically you need to uh, improve the quality of the labor room okay so here the intention is that the labor room quality improvement initiative so where we need to uh, provide all the necessity facilities into the labor room sterilize it also under the swachha bharat mission there is a, a program uh, kaya kalp okay kaya kalp it also intend the intention of this is also very same cleanliness in the public hospital but kaya kalp it's like overall cleanliness into the public hospital and laksha it's specifically with respect to the labor room okay then ma ma that is mother's absolute affection so we know that key in the initial uh, uh, stage of the development breastfeeding is extremely required for the development of a child so in order to encourage mothers to breastfeed their babies this particular program is being held okay then we have Mission Parivar Vikas introduced in the year 2016. So basically, it tries to target certain important uh, states of the country like UP, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Assam. These states constitute 44% of the India's population uh, because the total fertility ratio of these states is really high. So this mission aims that you need to encourage family planning into these states. Also, you need to provide free contraceptives in the government hospital. Okay, All India uh, total uh, fertility ratio was 2.2 in 2016. And the aim is to reduce it to 2.1 by 2025. Okay, So aim is to be reduced it to 2.1 uh, by 2025. Then coming to, yeah, so there was a question in preliminary examination with respect to the Janani Suraksha Yojana. We have studied this Janani Suraksha Yojana that is providing the uh, cash transfer of rupees 1000 for delivering a baby in the government uh, hospital. Okay, so uh, your um, the aim of this uh, Janani Suraksha Yojana is first uh, option, uh, first statement given over here to promote institutional delivery. Second one, to provide monetary assistance to the mother to meet the cost of delivery and to provide for the wage loss during pregnancy and confinement. Okay. So first of all, we know that the statement number one is definitely true. That is to promote institutional deliveries. So answer will be either A or answer will be D. Okay. Ya to A hai, ya to answer is D. Uh, coming to to provide for wage loss during pregnancy, rupees thousand say thali one time you are giving rupees thousand. Okay, so is say up you cannot uh, compensate the wage loss. Hazar rupees of wage loss nahi kar sakte, compensate nahi kar sakte ho. So definitely statement number three is uh, it's confirm it's wrong. So eliminate statement number three. So answer will be definitely A. That is to promote institutional deliveries and to provide monetary assistance to the mother to meet the cost of delivery. So here also when we talk about cost of delivery, basically whenever you are going to the government hospital, the cost of delivery will be free only, right? Because here what is the basic viewpoint? You have to encourage the ladies to go to the government hospital and uh, uh, promote institutional deliveries. So if you will go to the government hospital, the cost of the delivery will be free of cost only. And then apart from that, you will be getting rupees 1000 extra. Okay, so that is the aim of this scheme. So answer is one and two only. Okay, coming to the next important scheme over here, that is Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. So what is this Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana? So uh, the intention over here is that 5,000 will be provided for the first child and 1,000 will come from the another scheme. So which is this another scheme? This is the scheme, Janani Suraksha Yojana. So from the Janani Suraksha Yojana, you will get 1,000 for the institutional delivery. Plus you will get 5,000 under Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. Introduced in the year 2017 by Ministry of Women and Child Development. So these all schemes are under this only, Women, Ministry of Women and Child Development. Again, it's a core scheme that is centrally sponsored scheme. 100% funded, centrally sponsored. So basically, what is the intention of this scheme? So they have given checkpoints, okay? So if a baby is born, institutional delivery is there, so you will get 1,000. But for this 1,000, there is no condition. The only condition is there, 
it should be below the lady should be below poverty line okay then you will get 1000 after this now for the other ladies <clears throat> uh, after you will get 1000 uh, once after the birth of the baby you come for the checkup and you know that after the birth of the baby certain vaccines are there so these installments are kept for that uh, uh, if you come for the first stage of vaccination you will get 1000 then uh, again if you will come at the second stage you will get all the vaccination polio all the bcg vaccination are being done you will get 2000 once again you will come after the third stage you will get 2000 so this is also an encouragement given to the women that in the expectation of money you will get your child uh, like all the vaccination is get done for your child as well okay so just in the lure of getting money even the vaccination is being done at the back end okay so pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana 5000 is kept aside under this and 1000 is given extra if you are a below poverty line lady and if you are doing the institutional delivery under the janani suraksha yojana okay so total amount is 6000 pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana total amount is 6000 but how this 6000 is bifurcated 5000 under this installments and 1000 under the Janani Suraksha Yojana. Now, one question. Why government is giving this uh, 6,000 ka cash transfer? National Food Security Act. Again, there was a preliminary question on this. I have not included the question, but there was a question on this. National Food Security Act 2013 requires Indian government to provide 6,000 to pregnant and lactating women. Okay, so by default, Indian government has to give 6,000 to the pregnant and lactating women. So government has introduced the scheme. So with the help of this scheme, government is trying to fulfill its obligation under the National Food Security Act. And uh, when we talk about this, so this scheme is for below poverty line ladies. Okay, so mainly the intention is to provide 6,000 to the pregnant and lactating ladies from the below poverty line families. So government has done this arrangement. So 5,000 under the PM Matru Vandana Yojana and 1,000 under the Janani Suraksha Yojana. Okay? So this is the mandate under the uh, National Food Security Act. Okay. Now, apart from this, now this scheme is not eligible for the women in government job. Also, uh, the girls who are less than 19 years old so again this is purposely they have introduced this so that to discourage females to discourage girls uh, to give birth at a uh, less age okay because you know that a lot of complications will be associated and if a girl is in a tender age it can have implica uh, implications on her health as well okay so that is for this and women can receive this 5000 okay for the first live birth only so this 5000 is for first live birth only, fine. So that you need to remember. And Janani Suraksha Yojana, here we have understood that ki under the Janani Suraksha Yojana, it is irrespective of the age or number of children. So that 1,000 you will get irrespective of the age, irrespective of the children, because the aim here is to promote institutional delivery. So for that, you will get irrespective 1,000. But for the Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana, you will get 5,000 if you like excluding to these things okay so you can if you are in government if a lady is in government service less than 19 age uh, or, and she can receive it only for the birth of the first child okay now one more important initiative is there palan thousand so basically the first uh, thousand days with respect to the child care is extremely important so this is a campaign run by the health ministry to guide the parents with respect to taking care of the children during the first thousand days okay so this is all about your national rural health mission okay so we have covered exclusively all the schemes that is asha janani suraksha yojana janani shishu suraksha karyakram suman that is uh, we talked about zero tolerance pradhan mantri uh, uh, Surakshit Matritiva Abhiyan. Remember that 9th wala, 9th of every month, Laksha labor room, uh, may proper, providing proper facilities into the labor room. Ma, it is very uh, simple. Mother's absolute affection with respect to the breastfeeding. Mashi, uh, sorry, Mission Parivar Vikas, controlling the total fertility uh, rate of India. And we have seen uh, the next is Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana and also the obligation under the National Food Security Act and Palin 1000 journey of the first 1000 days. Okay, Now let's come to the vaccination. Quickly, we'll understand the uh, important happenings in the country, developments with respect to the field of vaccination done under the health ministry, 100% funding, plus we get funding from the international organizations like 
WHO and UNICEF. Okay. So for the very first time, the immunization program was introduced in the country in 1985. In 1985, universal immunization program was introduced to give free vaccines for BCG vaccine for TB and meningitis, oral polio vaccine, and subsequently WHO declared India to be a polio-free uh, country in 2014. Then rotavirus vaccine for diarrhea, Japanese encephalitis, it's a uh, disease which is restricted to only few selected areas of the country. So there only this vaccine is given, okay? Measles, rubella vaccine, MR vaccine, then the vaccine for diphtheria, tetanus, the whooping cup that is pertussis, influenza, type B and hepatitis B, okay? Uh, so these all vaccines, they were covered under the universal immunization program, fine. Uh, now in 20, uh, but it was understood that in 2014, it was un uh, understood that he, this universal immunization program was able to cover only 65% of the children of this nation. As a result, in 2014, uh, Prime Minister of a country, Mr. Modi, introduced Mission Indra Dhanush. So, Mission Indra Dhanush, what is the intention behind this? Immunization of 100% of the children below two years, okay, against at least seven important disease, okay. So, Indra Dhanush, Indra Dhanush means the seven colors of rainbow. So, they are targeting the seven diseases, okay. Uh, diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, polio, tuberculosis, okay. So, like that, seven diseases are being uh, covered over here. After this, in 2017, PM Modi launched intensified mission Indra Dhanush, okay. So, intensified mission Indra Dhanush to cover 90%, at least 90% of the children below the age of two and all pregnant women by 2018, okay. So, that was the target over here. So, that is intensified mission Indra Dhanush to cover at least 90% children below age two and all the pregnant women by 2018. Then intensified mission Indra Dhanush 3 was launched from 2021 onwards. Basically, during the pandemic period, uh, we, uh, we had seen that many pregnant women and uh, children, they missed their vaccination doses. So in order to focus on them, this was introduced. Okay, So these are the different vaccination schemes. Just remember the first one introduced in 1985. Then you have mission Indra Dhanush in 2014. Then intensified being introduced subsequently with the years with the different targets, this intensified mission Indra Dhanush are introduced. Now coming to the next scheme, which was introduced in budget 2018, Ayushman Bharat National Health Protection Mission core scheme. Core scheme means it is a centrally sponsored scheme only. It's a core scheme, not 100% funded. 60 is to 40 is the ratio. Okay. Uh, so here the intention is primary healthcare centers to be transformed into health and wellness centers, okay? Health and wellness centers where we could be providing free drugs, free checkup, okay? And uh, childcare. Then the next is, we all know that there is an insurance coverage that is being given under here. So under the tagline of Pradhan Mantri Jan Arubya Yojana, uh, health insurance of 5 lakh per poor family per year, okay? So that is there. Then uh, health cess has been introduced into the country. So, 5% of health cess is introduced on the custom duties on the imported medical devices. So, whatever uh, medical devices that are imported into the country, 5% uh, of health cess is being introduced on the custom duty. And this cess will be specifically used for building hospitals in the PPP mode, okay, under the Ayushman Bharat scheme. So, these are the important um, uh, things about uh, this national uh, Ayushman Bharat mission. Now talking about national health policy introduced in the year 2017. Okay, So what is the focus of the national health policy? The focus of the national health policy is increasing the health expenditure of the country to 2.5% of the GDP. Okay, So the mandate is to increase the health expenditure to 2.5% of the GDP. Now it is hardly 0.6% of the GDP. We need to increase it to the 2.5% of the GDP. Okay. Uh, transforming primary healthcare centers into the health and wellness centers. Also, this national health policy introduced about into, uh, forming national digital authority, that is national e-health authority. Um, and this will be encouraging telemedicines into the country. Okay, And also, uh, national health policy focuses on increasing in the generic devices, making cheap medical devices available into the country, making India and alternative medical system that is focusing on Ayush medicines also. So that is a national health policy introduced in the year 2017. Remember that the focus is to increase the public health expenditure to 2.5% of the GDP, okay? 
Uh, one more important institution which we'll be discussing as of now, that is in 1997, NPPA, National Pharmaceutical Dr Pricing Authority, uh, was set up as an attached office under Department of Pharmaceuticals, which is uh, which func functions under Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizer. This was a preliminary question. NAPA, that is National Pharmaceutical and Pricing Authority, it is an attached office under which ministry? So remember, Department of Pharmaceuticals, Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizer. Okay. Usually we think that it's related to the pharmaceuticals, so it is associated with the health ministry. No, it is associated with the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers. Okay. So this particular NAPA, it's an attached office, but certain powers are given to it under Essential Commodity Act and Drug Price Control Order. Okay. So the basic work profile of this agency is to monitor and to regulate the prices of the drugs into country okay and put a ceiling on essential drugs okay so we uh the government has um categorize 800 plus essential medicines and it is the duty of this NAPA in order to regulate the prices of this uh essential medicines okay then they have certain pro uh, portals also Pharma Sahidam, where we can check the current uh, drug prices before buying them, and Pharma Jan Samadhan. So, we uh, consumers also, we can file a complaint about the drug pricing and availability. Okay? So, these are the different steps which have been taken by the Indian government in order to promote the healthcare. Okay? One more initiative, we all are aware about this, that is, uh, we have Pradhan Mantri Jan Aushadi Pari Yojana, uh, that is uh, providing generic medicines into the country. Again, this is under Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers. Uh, who is implementing this? So, uh, Bureau of Pharma PSUs of India. So, uh, BPPI, it's an autonomous body. All the pharma public sector undertakings, uh, they have come together and they have formed this Bureau of uh, Pharma PSUs of India. They work under Ministry of uh, chemical and fertilizer it's an autonomous body under this ministry and this is this works as a, a not-for-profit society uh, it is basically an NGO type which is registered under society's registration act 1860 okay so what does this BPPI do uh, they uh, basically provide generic medicine to the Jan Aushadi stores okay so there are uh, like uh, those those individuals those who want to start the Jan Aushadi store they can apply for starting these stores and uh, uh, these stores will be given medicines generic medicines will be given to them by bppi okay so bbpi sorry bbpi will be giving them the generic medicines uh, so generic medicines as we all know it is again a very important initiative introduced in the country in order to make medicines affordable to all the common citizens okay so very important initiative taken so these are all the initiatives we have covered which have been taken by the indian government in the field of health okay so all the uh, uh, major initiatives we have covered today if anything is remaining and all in the subsequent sessions we'll be trying to understand we'll be covering that also but as of now we have covered everything from the uh, health perspective we have understood uh what uh, the uh, uh, the departments of the health ministry different offices under it autonomous body and we have mainly focused on mother and child care because the article mainly focuses on the primary health care and focuses on mother and child care okay so we have studied about the icds uh, ds program uh, then national rural health mission under it different sub schemes we have covered today we have also covered uh, the vaccination programs which are there in the country for ayushman bharat then national health policy and um, national pharmaceutical pricing authority and we have covered the uh, cheap medicines uh, that is a uh, generic medicine scheme which is there in the country okay uh, now going back to the article now article talks about so the article was talking about the steps taken by the government so we have covered all the steps okay now when we talk about primary health care so primary health care and the alma ata declaration which we studied as of now alma ata declaration was only focusing on primary health care and making primary health care accessible to all affordable to all but today just providing primary health care will not suffice the thing and most important a uh, primary health care and the alma ata declaration it does not cover chronic di uh, diseases like if we all know that ki today in our country chronic dis di uh, chronic diseases like cancer like diabetes uh, uh, like when we talk about heart diseases, kidney diseases, these are chronic means what? Where there is a prolonged illness and prolonged medication is required. 
Now, if we are just focusing on primary healthcare, that will not suffice as of now. Initially, at 1978, where nothing was available, during that time, if we were focusing on primary healthcare, it was fine because we were building the base of the health system of a country. But today we are seeing that Indian population, more and more Indian population is riddled by these chronic devices, diabetes, cancer, and the treatment is actually very costly. If you go for the cancer treatment, it literally costs around 10 to 15 lakhs depending upon the intensity of the cancer. And if a poor farmer from the poor area if he is contracted with the cancer, listening to the amount itself, he says that I don't want to go and get the treatment itself. It's better to die rather than to get into the vicious cycle of death. So now the concept should be just making primary health care affordable and accessible. It's not enough. We need to introduce a newer concept where we need to make even secondary and tertiary health care affordable and accessible. A good step has been taken by the Indian government with respect to the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arugya Yojana. I was studying a case study um, of one uh, auto driver. He underwent uh, cardiac arrest and uh, immediately his family members uh, hospitalized him. Uh, he was uh, uh, told by the uh, doctor to undergo bypass surgery, open heart surgery. And the approximate cost of this surgery is 4 lakhs. Okay, So immediately for that auto driver, it could have been extremely difficult to arrange 4 lakhs and get treated. However, when uh, the agencies, they checked his Aadhaar, uh, they checked this Russian card into the uh, uh, Ayushman Bharat uh, portfolio and uh, it was seen that ki he belongs to the below poverty uh, line and immediately he was given the uh, benefit of 5 lakhs health coverage and immediately his opera operation was done free of cost under the Ayushman Bharat scheme. Okay, So literally this is a very good step taken by the Indian government but then we need to further uh, but this is with respect to few government hospitals and few government empaneled hospital. We do understand that the facilities provided in the government hospitals, the cleanliness and all, it's not that up to the mark. Okay, So now it is extremely important that ki overall the healthcare system has to be made affordable and accessible into the nation. So the article talks that ki what should be the uh, newer concept of the universal healthcare. Up till now, the concept of uh, healthcare was what primary healthcare should be made affordable and accessible. But now the newer concept of uh, universal healthcare, it says that ki not only the primary healthcare, but also we need to uh, make the uh, secondary and tertiary healthcare also affordable and accessible to all the citizens. Okay, So that is actually this entire article for which we were discussing so long. So this is all about uh, this um, article. Okay, uh, So this is all uh, from the today's uh, perspective already. It's, uh, yeah, it's nine. So that's it for the day. I hope uh, the things are clear. Now we'll go to the questions. If you have any doubt, we can just, I'll just allow you guys to unmute. Yeah, now you can speak. Yes, any doubt? Uh, yes, part uh, was, yes, yes, part, go ahead. Uh, Madam, in that scheme, wherein like uh, the government, is bound to give 6,000 under NSFA and they chose a way of giving 5,000 for the first child and uh, 1,000 additional for uh, BPL yeah. children. Yes, but that bound for BPL families only, okay? It is not for everyone. Yeah, one case for ah. BPL families, right? Yes, yes. yes. Th that 5K, like mm. uh, uh, barring PSU women, even yeah. if a person, like even if a lady is very rich and she goes to a government hospital, even she gets 5,000, regardless of her economic background. Uh, yes, that is being uh, given to her. But here, see, uh, first of all, a lady is very rich. She herself will not go only. That is the first thing because you know that taking into consideration the government uh, health centers and all, she will not go only. So that is taken into consideration that he, the, the rich people won't be coming only. So they have kept this criteria only that uh, government, those who are not government, uh, so those who are government employees, they will be barred from this. Also, uh, only this is applicable for the first child. Okay, so only for the first child, this is given, but nothing other, no other, uh, this uh, 
uh, what uh, other criteria are given. Only this much is the criteria that is given. As per the scheme, this is the only criteria. Fine, Pa? Yes, for it. All right, yeah. Any other doubt? I hope the topics are clear. These are very simple topics. Fine. So I think so. There are no other issues. So we'll end this session. All right. Fine then. Chalo. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Yes.